Morgan And I recently had my heart broken Broken! So I did what any logical person would do What did you do? I made a podcast about it Why? Because no matter who you are or where you're from When you get dumped, everybody's talking about it Are they, bitch? Famously dumped Welcome back to another episode of Famously Dumped. I'm your host, Morgan Miller, and this is the show where we talk exclusively about getting dumped, about breakups that we did not choose, babe. We didn't want them, okay, but they happened anyways, all right? Before we get started, we're going to check in with me and my emotions, obviously, and how I'm feeling. And today, you guys, I'm feeling, honestly, hopeful, and I don't know if that's hopeful for my future in general or for getting over my ex, but I'm just going to let it be what it is. And that is, I'm just hopeful. So we love that for me in a way and in every way, maybe. Um, but also as always, I'm super grateful because we have another amazing guest and I can't wait to have her on guys. Our guest is Anna Roisman and she is an absolute delight. Okay. She's a host on HQ and she also has her own podcast called unemployed with Anna Roisman. So check that out. And you know what? Let's get this baby started. Bring it in Brandon. Hi. Hello. You're a delight. I'm feeling hopeful now that I heard that intro. That was gorgeous. That really. <laughs> I really Thank hit home. You. Thank you. You know what? We all need it a little bit. We're all good. Right. I'm good. We're good. Okay. I'm here. You're here and I'm queer. All right. <laughs> and I love that for us. I love um, it. We love it. Okay, great. So uh, let's get into it. So first okay. of all, before we get started talking about your ex, we don't mention the names of our exes because we this isn't an ex bashing podcast and it's like, you know, we want to protect the anonymity of those we loved once or didn't. Okay. Um, so uh, what we are going to do now is help you pick an alias for your ex. Brandon, bring up the slide. Lynn. Oh, top 10 baby names. <laughs> top 10 baby names of 2019 to help you pick an alias for your ex. Is this an ex-boyfriend or an ex-girlfriend? Ex-boyfriend. Got it. Why don't we go with... <laughs> I was going to pick the weirdest one. Declan? Is that how you say it? <laughs> Declan, it is. So many people pick Declan. Oh, like, no, really? Crazy. Should no, I pick a different it. one? Okay. You want to. I, I mean, Declan's great. We're just going to have every, all the ex boyfriends of all my guests are going to be taking Declan. <laughs> so, uh, someone's going to hear it and not connect it and be like, there's this guy out there named Declan, and we hate him. He's yeah. dated too many nice people. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Um, okay, great. Declan, it is. Next little segment before we really dive in is a section that we call Dump Stats. <laughs> oh, my butt photo. Thank you. Dump Stats. Dump Stats. Dump Stats. These are the Dump Stats. Yep, I did create that. Thank it's you. A beautiful so much. song. That was really nice. Yeah. Thank you. Wait, what picture is this? Did you say? Oh, I, I was really showing off my butt. You know, the face is there, but it's really about the angle of you know how I am turned around. Yeah, yeah the baseball card shows off the butt. We got it. Yeah. Yeah. Um, great. So this is your baseball card, and we do a section called Dump Stats, where we just get some stats out of the way so we know a little bit about you and what okay. we're about to get into. So we'll rattle these off. Um, first of all, our first dump stat is. How many times have you been dumped? I want to say like one real time, but three baby times. So <laughs> <laughs> that was a terrible answer. Should we just go with one? No, I love it. <laughs> I love it. Let's do it one and three baby times. Does it mean they were small relationships? Yes, they were like not, not yeah. serious enough. Yeah. Okay. No, I think if you consider them baby dumps, we we will call them baby <laughs> dumps. <laughs> Three baby dumps. <laughs> one, one you ever take dump. a baby dump? <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Three baby dumps, one dump. Yeah, one large. About. Great. Next, um, have you ever dumped someone? Yes. How many people? Um like baby dumps, because I really I have a weird history. I'd say like two baby dumps. Two baby dumps. Okay, yeah. great. This is a new term that we might be using going I forward. I kind of love it. You know, it's not as it's not as big as my like large juicy dump. It's like, you know, the baby dump. Yeah, little teeny tiners. 
it's like half a cup of coffee. You know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> cool, great. So two, you've dumped, yeah, had some two baby dumps under your belt. Um, next for this uh, main dump that we're talking about with Declan, uh, how long ago did it happen? Mm, um, now like five years ago. Five years ago, great. Yeah. And how old were you? When it happened? Oh, we're giving ages. Wait, I don't want to give my age. Okay. Uh, no. 22. Wait, <laughs> no. we're going to say 22. Okay, that's the age I choose, but it's not the real age. I was older. <laughs> okay, great. Were you in, can I just ask, were you in your 20s or your 30s? 20s, late 20s. Late 20s, great. Okay. Um, we just want to know, you know, in terms of like, how oh, the fucked up are we? Um, but we are going to, babe, if you don't want to say you're an age, you're 22. It's um, a joke. Yeah. It's a then- joke, but it's real, you know? <laughs> of course that we also, I look like i'm in a sex phone hotline because it's so dark but i didn't want the sun to be uh, it's a bad okay <laughs> i love it i think you look great thank you um, okay great and how long were you and declan together almost eight years seven and Ooh. a half years whoa i know long- can you believe that for a declan Ugh. <laughs> so, all right seven and a half years and then how are you feeling emotionally about the breakup right now i feel at peace at Peace, beautiful. Thank and you. lastly, um, when the dump happened, did you go full psycho? Yes, full, <laughs> full. full, yeah, the yeah. most I've ever been. Really? Wow. Okay, mm-hmm. we're gonna dive into that for sure. Mm-hmm. Great. Uh, so those are your dump stats. We're gonna just recap quick. Um, you have been dumped one time when three baby dumps. Uh, you've dumped. You've had two baby dumps under your belt. Uh, this happened five years ago. You were. 22 in your late 20s and uh you guys were together seven and a half years and you feel at peace and after the breakup you did go full on psycho full psycho yes. full psycho okay mm-hmm. great all right um so let's do it let's get into it so first of all we just want to say how did you and declan meet and um sort of like just a short kind of how did you guys meet and how was the relationship in general um for the seven and a half years that you guys were together so we met in college um freshman year of college he and i both met doing a play together um and you know those straight boys in theater Mm, they don't come around (laughs) so often um no but it immediately was a friendship i was dating someone else at another school i was dating the captain of the harvard tennis team i just have to throw that in there and he was a theater boy at boston university um and (laughs) (laughs) so we were friends for a whole year like good friends like he dated other girls i remember and we lived in the same like dorm you know building or whatever so like we would hang out we'd like pre-game before we like went out and stuff so we were good friends and then sophomore year we like came back to school i don't know what happened over the summer but then we like I don't know. We we did a show together. <laughs> I had never really dated like anyone who did theater. We did a show together and we were like, we joked that like we were going to make out like the whole time. We we're like, yeah, we're going to make out so hardcore at the like cast party. And like, it was a joke, but then we like did. And then we started seeing each like, that was it. We were yeah. together for seven and a half years. And the relationship was good. I would say because we were friends first, it was a very like, you know, we had a lot of jokes. We were very silly with each other. We were you know, we were nice to each other. We didn't, we didn't fight that much. Our families were very different. So I feel like if any of our fights, you know, happened, they were because of family stuff. It wasn't like, we didn't like hate each other. We were really on the same page. I thought for like most of it, um, I would say by year, you know, six, five or six, like you're kind of like, am I going to be with this person forever? Like I definitely went through the motions of like, oh my God, like I'm going to, I'm never going to date anyone again. Like you think of that sometimes. Yeah. And I come from parents who got engaged after three months. My parents like went on a date, got engaged three months later, got married, had me like they were like, (laughs) and they're still together. They're still together. They're all your mom's all over your Instagram. She's they're literally together. Like I always am like, Oh, what's my birthday. That's how long my parents have been together. And they're just like, you know, you know, like they, they were like, we dated a lot of people and we were just like, whatever we, we want the same things. Wow. (laughs) I mean, (laughs) good, good. God bless. You know what I mean? There's no formula. That's what I always say. I'm like, who, who cares? Yeah. Yeah. You've always said that. I have. Yeah. You've always said that. You've always said that. (laughs) Can I ask before we go, what play, what show were you guys in? (laughs) Okay. So we met doing how to succeed in business without really trying. 
<laughs> and this is the best. We were we played opposite each other, and so and we did this like whole like duet. And then during the show, I, we got in trouble because we kissed at the end of the song, uh-huh. and that was not a part of the like choreography. <laughs> and the choreographer had a crush on him and was straight up like, "That is not part of what no. I taught you guys." And we were like, "Fuck her!" Like whatever. We felt like making out. We did it in front of two hundred people. <laughs> oh my god. So funny. That is so funny. Oh, God. Oh, it's so embarrassing, though. No, but cute. Kind of cute. Sure. Yeah. We were 18 and we were, you know, this yeah, was also yeah. before we were together. So we wow. were like, that's so weird. We just like ended up kissing on stage when it wasn't part of the number. Oh, yeah. 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 Absolutely. <laughs> um, that's so funny. Oh, my God. <laughs> so funny. Um, okay. Great. So, Let's uh let's talk about it. So he dumped you. What happened? How, so what happened and how did you feel and what the fuck happened? It was crazy. So like I I got to say I've had a pr- I had a pretty good life. Like I, you know, there were some my family's had some stuff go on in my life and he was with me for a lot of it. Like my sister you know, back in the day, she went to rehab at a really young age. And my dad is sober now, too. And and like the, he was with me for a lot of that. And his family went through a lot of stuff, too. His dad came out after 30 years and, you know, was like probably had a boyfriend in the city. But like his mom was at home. It was a lot of like stuff in our, our family lives, I feel like, by the end of our relationship. And. I don't think we knew how to like process it ourselves. And like, so we were still together and acting like everything was normal, but it wasn't the same. And it was weird. It was like his dad, his dad's thing, you know, when his dad came out, it they pretended that this didn't happen for a really long time, which was so fucked up. Mm-hmm. And I could just see it weighing on him. Like we'd yeah. go to like holiday dinners and they'd pretend to be married still. And it was just like, because that was their generation like he didn't know how to like come out to his family it was awful and it was just awful to see and like here we are we came out of like you know doing fucking musicals at theater like all of our friends are gay like that's the norm so i don't know it really weighed a lot on him and the last year of our relationship he was weird and i i mean weird like he would forget things like he was a very smart person but he'd be like he'd say like nonsense things and he would like he'd act weird we'd go out to like a friend's birthday and they'd be like is he doing drugs he like said some weird stuff and like repeated himself and like I thought he had like a brain problem like I literally was like you need to get checked out like there's something wrong people are thinking you're like not okay and so finally like it I went to I remember the date that this happened. It was December 27th and I had gone to Arizona with my mom. My sister was living there and her birthday's on Christmas. So we went to go visit her. And I remember he was home with our dog and he like wasn't answering the phone and like he'd answer and he'd think it was like morning and it was like 8 p.m. And he's like, oh, yeah, like I'm I'm having lunch. And I'm like, what are you saying? Like saying crazy shit. And I knew something was weird. And then he was like, I'm going to, I'm going to go home to my parents. And he's from New Jersey. And he, I was like upset because I hadn't seen him in a week. I was away. And then like, I came back and he like pretended everything was fine and got sushi. He was really good at like being a good boyfriend when he like, you know, wanted to. And Mm. then the next morning he was like really weird again and he's slurring his words. And I guess I'm so naive. And he like started hysterically crying And he was like, I have a problem. He's like, I have a drinking problem. Uh, I don't know what to do. I, I, and I was like, I was like, what? And like, it it was so weird in the, in the, in the fridge. Like, I don't drink red vitamin water. All the red vitamin waters were full of like vodka and like the diet Coke. I don't drink diet Coke. I drink ginger. Like, just like his stuff was all full of alcohol. He hid it from me. And that was the whole year, I guess, because all of our friends were like, what's wrong with Declan? (laughs) And so it was really, it was like, it was like blindsided. I had no idea that this, I thought he was like mental. So Mm -hmm. I remember I literally took a walk to Starbucks and I called my dad crying and I was like, I don't know what to do. Like, I think he needs to go to a rehab. Like he's crying on the ground right now saying he needs help. Like, I don't know how to, and my dad had kind of, he, he, deals with this a lot my dad's on the board of a rehab and he goes to AA every day and he loves it and he's a really involved person and I took a walk to Starbucks I came back and Declan had gone Declan left and I didn't know where he went 
or what happened. This was like in the span of 40 minutes. I guess his dad was in the city and picked him up and took him to New Jersey. And I, we never were in the same place again. We never lived together again. I saw him maybe three times on my hand, three, four times after that. Wow. After seven and a half years, after living in three apartments together, like we did a year of long distance, like we had like a whole life together. And I was, I was fucking gone. I was just like blown away. So he walked out and that was, that was how he dumped you. Just, yeah, done. he just left. And he, you know, it was a lot of dragging on like for six months. I didn't speak to him for two weeks, which felt insane. The first night or the second night, I was just like I sobbing, crying. And I'm not the type of I can't call my mom when I'm like super upset. She's a very tough love lady. So she's mm -hmm. like, Anna, pull it together. Like, you know, life is hard. You'll get over it. Like, I couldn't handle that. And I didn't want to call friends. I was so like, how can I explain this to people? I People knew us as a couple for so long. Like, I just didn't I didn't reach out to anyone. And I was like, I guess I have to figure out how to help him. Like, that was my immediate reaction. Like, how do I help him? I have to get I have to I have to save him so he can be yeah. my boyfriend. Yeah. So I like I Googled like Al-Anon meetings because yeah. I was like, oh, my God, like if I finally educate myself like I hadn't my, you know, my family has been involved in AA for a long time. And I know I'm blowing their anonymity right now, but they're pretty proud of it. But I went to an Al-Anon meeting at a church on New Year's Eve because this happened on the 27th. I remember on New Year's Eve, I was like, I don't know what to do. I don't want to watch anything New Year's Eve on TV. I remember I just would watch like whatever's on my DVR. And I went to this meeting at a church like in the city yeah. and I like held hands with a bunch of strangers who like all had known they knew each other and I like sobbed and was like my boyfriend left I don't he won't talk to me I don't know what to do uh, yeah. and I don't know what I don't want to have New Year's so I came here like I was I don't know who the fuck I was or what made me do that and uh it was weird it was really weird uh-huh yeah yeah. I mean, the ultimate coda thing, the co codependent thing is like, I got to fix him. Yeah. So can, like, get back. Oh, together. my God. I was we were so codependent. Like we grew up together, you know, mm -hmm. sophomore year of college to 22. I mean, so many years, you know? <laughs> yeah. I mean, as someone who does, like has been sober three and a half years. Congratulations, like, by the way. That's so much. that's major. Thank that you. really is. Thank I'm you. proud of you. Thank you. Uh, yeah, it's been rough, but like the best thing that's ever happened to me. Yeah. Um, but. Yeah, as someone who, and also I was so codependent in my relationship too, that when she left me and I call her Darcy, that's what, what I call her. When Darcy, Darcy and Declan could be a couple. That's true. Maybe they should, <laughs> maybe they should get together. Um, no, no. <laughs> um, but Darcy left and I, I think at the end I was so like, I have to fix her, us. I have to fix all, fix it all. Yeah. And I think that's what like blew, made it blow up. It was like you can't fix someone and that's the whole deal. So yeah. I get it, but that's like immediately what it's you so hard to like teach yourself that, that like yeah. this is them and they got to figure their own shit out. And I have to just focus on myself. Like that's the hardest thing I think to learn. Yeah, but... definitely. So two weeks, totally out of commission, totally just like psych. She was went full on insane. And then how did you heal? What happened to be now you seem good, <laughs> not there. So what happened? How long was it bad? Uh, what did you do to get out of the depression? It seems like you were in Yeah, all that kind of stuff. Like, how did you get through this f insane breakup where he just the dump was like, bye and out the door, out the door? I mean, it was I literally look back and I'm like, I don't know how I got through those first two weeks without hearing from him. Like we lived together. He wasn't even texting me back. His parents took his phone like he's a fucking little kid. So it was just I don't know what I did. I just kind of like watched TV. I, I like went I, I don't I didn't do comedy. I didn't go to shows. I didn't do anything. And then he called me finally and we talked for a little and he kind of like I said, you probably need to get some help. And he was like, no, I'll be fine. I just can't, I can't like come to the apartment. And then it was like every weekend he'd come in and see me 
And it was bad because I'd be like, I have an improv class. I paid for this class with my own money. I got to go. And I'd come back from class and he'd be wasted. And I'd drag his ass to like meetings around the city. And I was like, this is not a life for a young person. Like, what am I doing? He he was, and then he'd sober up by like 1 a.m. and be like, let's get tacos. Like, I love you. And it was like, it was just a roller coaster. And that was like six months. It was bad. I didn't do anything. I didn't even hang out with friends. I remember four months in, I called my best friend from college and I was like, I don't know how to explain this, but what happened? Like, but he's gone. And, and, you know, and it was, I, we, I like ended it on my birthday. I know that sounds crazy, but I was like, he like had an excuse. He was going to be late or he might not come. He didn't want to see like my family or my brother was going to be in. He didn't want to see them because he was embarrassed. He never got help. He just kind of like went to his parents and was like, whatever, I'll figure it out. And he would call me when he was drunk because they had alcohol in the house. It was bad. And I was like, you know what? Don't come to my birthday. I, we fought about something and I was like, don't come. And I figured if I can get through my birthday, which I put so high up on like my list, I'm like, my birthday is a month long and it's a party (laughs) and I love it. If I can do my birthday without him there, like I'll be okay. And I like put that on myself. Like, a month before. And then I told him, I was like, don't come to my birthday. Don't show up late. I don't want you there at all. Uh, I want to see if I can do my birthday. And that was the end. That was like it. But it was like six months of like, you know, oh, maybe we're okay. Oh no, we're not okay. Oh, he's coming in this weekend. Maybe he'll move back. Oh no, he's just here for the night. Oh no. Like it was nonstop. And it was so just like tiring. (laughs) Yeah. So it was like you didn't cut. It wasn't like a cord was cut until your birthday. Yeah. And then did you feel relieved? Was it then like since you'd had six months of like chaos? Chaos. How did you feel when you were like birthday done? I felt okay. I think I was like, yeah, my siblings came in. My family came in for my birthday and I was like, it was fun. I had a lot of friends come out. I remember we did karaoke and I was like, this was fun. I don't need him there. I don't need to have him there to like enjoy my life and and people who I care about and I like. And and then I feel like as soon as I hooked up with someone, because I didn't hook up with anyone for those six months. But as soon as you sleep with someone else, you're like, I was like, I was like the 40 year old virgin. I mean, granted, I was 18 before we started 19 before we started dating. So I didn't know how to date. I didn't go on any apps or anything. And then I hook up with someone and I was like, oh, I'm amazing at sex. I am back in the game. I am fine. I don't need like my ego went so high because I do think it helps when you hook up with someone else and you're like, wait, I can I can feel things. And I'm like able to do this with someone that's not that person. Like, I don't know. Yeah, I've heard the phrase. I don't know if you've heard this. You have to get under someone to get over someone. Mm. I I agree with that. <laughs> yeah, at the top, it doesn't work for me. What would be your overall advice for someone who who goes through that kind of breakup, where there's like drugs and alcohol involved, and it's sort of tumultuous, and it's like a big, like storm out, never seen again? What would be your like overall advice for what people who might go through that? Whoa, hold on one second. Hi, before we get to the overall advice, my name is Morgan Miller. You've just been watching me this whole time. I'm the host of Famously Dumped, and I've got a couple of things I gotta tell you before we finish up the episode. One, we have an email account, famouslydumped at gmail.com, where you can email me. Maybe you have comments, questions for our guests, questions for me. Maybe you have advice for our listeners, or maybe you have a story about getting dumped that you wanna tell me about. So please email me there. I'd love to hear from you, and we'll put it on the podcast. Two, you can donate to the show, which is great. How can you donate at our Venmo, which is famously underscore dumped, or you can go on over to my Patreon account, which is patreon.com backslash morganmiller1717. Over on my Patreon will live bonus episodes, uncut episodes, and other comedy material that I'm coming out with that will strictly be on Patreon, okay? So head on over there. And finally, don't forget to follow me on social media. Yes, I'm doing a social media plug. Come on, it's 2021. Let's get to it. My social media is morganmiller17 across the board. And also, I'm on TikTok. Yes, I'm in my 30s. I have TikTok. I kind of blew up over there. So go check me out. That's Morgan Miller Talks, T-O-K-S. And that's about it. You guys, let's get back to the episode. Enough for me. Bring us on back. You're much stronger than you think you are. And I think you just need to focus. It sounds so silly. Focus on yourself. But that could be the littlest thing from like, watch your favorite TV show over and over again. Eat 
pad thai every freaking night. I would order foods I liked. Like I was just like, I'm going to do whatever I want. I don't have anyone to listen to. So I think just trust that you're stronger than you think you are. You're going to feel like shit and it's awful and it's emotional, but like you can do this. Like you can do anything you want. And like, that's your moment to focus on that. Like whatever that is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and from this, did you think you learn and you grew a lot? Like, are you a better partner from what you've learned from that now? Cause I know you're, you're in a relationship now and who I love. Today. Oh, thank you. I do. I think I'm much more, it's funny, you know, we were talking about being codependent. I feel like now I'm like, I'm, I'm probably, I don't know if it's good or bad. I'm much more selfish in a relationship. <laughs> Not, I think it's good. <laughs> Which is good, but it can also haunt you. But I think I'm like, no, this is what I need to do for me. It doesn't mean I don't love you any less or any, you know what I mean? But like, I do focus on myself a lot more. I think then it was always like, what should we do? What should we watch? What should we eat? What should, whereas like now it's like, no, he here's, here's my schedule for the day. And like, that's kind of what I'm going to go with and yeah. love me or leave me. But <laughs> yeah, I have yeah, shit yeah. to do. I don't know. I got used to it. I got used to like, I remember being like, oh, I, I still say always all the time to my boyfriend, I'm like, I can't wait till we're rich enough to have like a three bedroom apartment. So like I have a room, you have a room, we have like a office, you know, separate yeah, yeah, space. Yeah. yeah, yeah, exactly. Well, that's yeah. I mean, oof, so it was like six months of like nightmare, nightmare. nightmare. And now seven or however long it happened five years ago, you're like better because of it. I really am. And like I. I really learned that it was, you know, you, it's not, it wasn't me. It wasn't anything I did. Mm -hmm. You really, cause you're, I blamed myself so much. I'm like, oh, I could have been nicer. I have journals that I found that were like, Anna, be a better girlfriend. Like make sure you cater to his problems. If he's upset about his family, like talk to him about it. Like I wrote all this weird shit. Like what was I even doing? And I'm like, there came a point where I was, I mean, obviously I was in a lot of therapy. My parents were like, please go to therapy. And they were like, we'll pay until, you know, you're better. Yeah. That didn't happen. Yeah. And, uh, but I really think I was like, fuck, I was just, there came a time where you're like, you know what, this is their, their problem. They're an adult and they're going through shit and it has nothing to do with me. Yes. I was part of the picture, but it really was not. And I couldn't help. You can't always help. Like you can't, you know, you can't do heart surgery. You can't like solve someone's like problems in their head. So yeah. the toughest lesson to learn when you're in it. Same, same over here. Yeah. yeah. It's so hard because you, so you want to, you're, you're a good person. That's why you, you're going to feel more because if you're a good person, you're like, I want to help this person. I want to be there for them. I want to change them so they can love me. Like I love them. And it's just like, they're going through shit. They're not thinking about that. Like yeah. they can't. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Wow. Well, Thank you for sharing that with us. And that's too heavy. That was too deep. No, oh my God. No, thank God. I mean, as someone who struggled with drugs and alcohol, it sounds a lot like my breakups before this one. And um, I was a disaster. So it was good to talk about it. Thank you for sharing it with us. We have a couple of segments before we get out of here. You, this was such a great, thank you for your advice and your honesty. It was really, really great. Um, so before we get out of here, we like to do a, a segment called. And now time for horoscopes. <laughs> that was that was that was therapy on its own. That was there gorgeous. Go. Some people Ooh. do say I have a voice that is like ASMR. Yeah. Maybe but that's yeah. your next series, you know. Maybe that's Just next series. <laughs> Morgan reads horoscopes and I don't know, <laughs> chews on chews on Twizzlers. I don't know what <laughs> ASMR is. <laughs> yeah, that's exactly what it is. Yeah. Um, great. So this is horoscope. So we uh see if you and your partner, uh Declan, were doomed from the start due to the stars. So what uh, is your sign? Gemini. Yes. You were Gemini dating a Gemini at one No, point? no, no. Oh, he's no. Oh, no, he's a Capricorn. He's a, oh, he's a Capricorn. Okay. Mm -hmm. All right. Okay. I say Gemini so proudly. And every time I say it, people have the exact reaction that you did where they're like, Ooh, yeah, you crazy. It's a hard <laughs> sign. It's a hard sign. It, my brother's a Gemini, married a Gemini. Like I've been very close to Gemini's. Um, it also depends on your moon and your rising and all that. Okay. Um, but let's see if Capricorn and Gemini's were a good match. And we go obviously to the most reputable site when it comes to horoscopes. And that is google.com 
I literally thought I was like People Magazine. Like that was where my brain went. <laughs> Great. So Brandon, go ahead and Google Capricorn and Gemini love compatibility. Oh, this is so fun. Live Googling. Yes. I probably should have done this like five, six years ago, huh? Maybe more. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. We always click on the first arrow because that is the truest one. And this is that Gemini and Capricorn uh, can be challenging relationship to make work. Um, however, if you can both adapt to the other's lifestyle in a relationship, which will improve steadily over time and eventually uh, rival any other match. So, wow. It doesn't seem you are probably good, but to adapt to that kind of lifestyle doesn't seem like the right kind of Capricorn for a Gemini to go to. Mm -mm. So but we, that's powerful. Yeah. Right. Cause we were really good for a lot of years. So the stars were like, here you go. And I think like, <laughs> You know, sometimes things end, but it, it was a good relationship overall. So Capricorn, Gemini for a little. Yeah. And then if we knew his moon sign, we'd probably feel like, oh, that's why it ended. So that's, uh, cool. yeah. <laughs> that's what it is. That's how it goes. Great. Brandon, take that away. Um, And then we have our final segment, which is Brandon, bring it up. <laughs> yes, honey. Yes. Honestly, yeah. The ASMR is... <sighs> <laughs> That's good. Um, great. Three compliments from Morgan. This is where you give me three compliments so I don't feel so shitty and sad about my life and my breakup. Oh, I get to give you about your own breakup. Oh, yeah. Okay. You know, just three compliments for me and Jen. A anyone you want to give. Morgan, I have known you for many years. You are the most fun person I know. And I honestly believe that any room you walk in, you are going to find someone who's like, oh, my God, I need to be around this person all the time. Just your energy is is a party. And I, you know, I mean that from parties to not parties, like you literally are such a good energy. I also think that you put your mind to something and you really go for it. And I think that any partner you're with is lucky to be with someone who has drive like you. I've seen you do it with like scripts you've written and like just projects you've worked on or stand up sets or, you know, you're like, I'm going to go do this and you do it. And it's like not a big deal to you, but like takes a lot of us a long time to actually do stuff. Mm -hmm. And lastly, I mean, Jesus Christ, I didn't know that you had such a sexy ASMR voice. So I really, you know, we've never dated, but I imagine like you really know how to talk dirty to someone. So I, you know, God bless all the relationships you've been in. You know, they have that that voice in their memory forever and they're they're probably all missing it. So I whoever you yeah. date next, you bring that to the table. OK, I mean, I the table, the ASMR. great. Yeah. A very sexy voice. Thank you so much. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Yeah. I mean, come on. Why aren't you dating me anymore? But anyways, uh, thank you uh, so much. This was so wonderful. Thank you for this being so so honest. About such a such a hard thing that you went through. But it's going to help a lot of people. And I was so, I learned a ton and I, I think so. you are wonderful thank and you were a delight to have on. So thank you so much. Thank you. I love you. I wouldn't do this for anyone, but I knew that we could have this conversation and I can like just be myself and tell you about this stuff. I couldn't do this years ago. I don't think I could have had this conversation because it's like, it's a lot to bring back, but yeah. I love you and I would do anything for you. So I appreciate Same. you having me. Same. Oh, I can't wait till we're famous together and I both have three bedroom apartments. Oh, yeah. Our own bedrooms. <laughs> yes, absolutely. Uh, lastly, where can we find you on social media and what should we look out for coming out in the future? Sure. You can find me at Anna Roisman everywhere. Um, and I've been making quarantine reboots. Um, we did Home Alone in the Notebook. So stay tuned for my next quarantine reboot uh, movie that's coming out and follow my podcast. Unemployed with Anna Royston. Unemployed with Anna Royston. Great. We'll do all that. Oh, you're the best. I love you. Thank you for doing this. I'll I love you too. Soon. Okay. Bye, I hope so. Bye. Thank you guys so much. That's another episode of Famously Dumb. Thanks for joining us. Um, Anna Roisman is a dream. Please follow her on all that good stuff. Um, and that's another episode. It's done. We learned. It was cathartic. It wasn't serious. But I learned and I laughed and I loved the whole time. We'll see you guys next time on another episode of Famously Dumb. Brandon, will you take us out with a song of your choice? Morgan, I told you this a million times. We don't have the rights to any music. Famously Dumb.